So today we have Mona Patel from the University of Alabama School of Dentistry. Mona, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So if we can, or if you can, please give us a brief summary of your dental school journey. So like, where are you from? Where you went to undergrad? What did you major in? And did you or did you not take a year off? All right. So I'm from Alabama. Um, I did undergrad and dental school, everything in Alabama. So I went to Troy University mm -hmm. for undergrad. And then I currently go to University of Alabama at Birmingham mm -hmm. um, for dental school. I did not take a year off. I kind of went, you know, graduated and then a few months later started dental school. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I basically haven't stepped outside of Alabama for, um, you know, any college purposes. Right, right. Okay. And so I know for you to go straight to dental school after uh, undergrad, I know you had to have done well on your DAT. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of our viewers always ask us that question, like, what's the best way or, you know, what's the best resource for my DAT? So do you have any advice for them? Yeah. So um, I, and I forgot to answer this, but I majored in um, biomedical sciences in undergrad. So I know even when I was in um, undergrad, I always asked people, you know, what was the best thing to major in? Because I knew I wanted to do dentistry. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, always helps going into a major that is, you know, biology driven or something that's, you know, hard on the sciences, just because that's what the DAT is most, um, mostly going to be right. consisted of. But um, I mean, I took the DAT about like what, four or five years ago. So I don't know if, you know, the same things still stand, but yeah. I remember I started off using Chad's videos. I don't know if they're still around. I think they changed it or there's someone they called changed it a little bit or or took videos. It. but something like that they were super helpful starting out just because i mean chemistry and ochem were things that i had done like a few semesters before i you know started studying for the dat so that it wasn't stuff that i remembered con you know clearly to go ahead and start taking practice tests right. so they were super helpful and kind of going step by step and you know, showing you all the information that you need. And I think that was super helpful in making all the notes that I needed for that. And then from there going on to taking practice tests after kind of getting a feel of what I had definitely forgotten from all my classes. Right, okay. And so did you do any type of like pre-dental program for the University of Alabama to kind of like, help with your chances of getting in or do they even have those type of programs at all? Yeah. So um I went to Troy so that I went to a different um undergrad than where mm -hmm. I went to dental school. Um but I was super accustomed to everything that was going on at UAB also just because mm -hmm. in the state I had a bunch of friends that went there. Um UAB has a great um pre dentistry um organization mm -hmm. and so did Troy um we kind of had a group that we got together talked about you know things that we were doing to get in um we had volunteer services just things to get you out into the community and then we also had um at Troy the admissions um director come to talk to us so that way you know you could kind of get to know him he could kind of get to know you mm -hmm. kind of you know get your foot in the door um just to just so he knows your name or kind of yeah. remembers you and I know UAB's um pre-dentistry organization they're super involved because I know they're involved even um with the dental school mm -hmm. um with the stuff that we do currently Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so obviously you, you got an interview. Um, mm -hmm. How was the actual interview day um, at UAB? Like, was it stressful? Like, did they do like, uh, what is like the, the mini interviews? Like, what was the whole yeah. structure so of it? I, UAB was super laid back. Um, I know what you're talking about, the mini interviews. I did have, um, I think one or two interviews where we did have mini interviews. And in my opinion, those were, always a lot more stressful than you know the straightforward interviews because it's really nothing you can prepare for mm -hmm. the yeah. mini interviews they give you scenarios and you kind of answer on the spot whereas uab's was more like a casual you know straightforward interview you went there and 
you know, they kind of take you on a tour around the school, you have lunch, and the lunch consists of the lunch with the um, admissions mm -hmm. director, plus you, they also ask some students. Um, so you might be having lunch with a current D1 or a current D2 or, you know, a mixed range of people. Right. So you can kind of ask them different scenarios um, that you're concerned about. Like, you know, if you're an out-of-state student, you know, how did they find a roommate or, you know, what's going, you know, just different things that concern you. So, and then at the end of the days when you had the actual interview and the interview was you go in and it's an interview with probably four or five different um, faculty that are present at the school. And it was just super laid back. I mean, I remember talking about Indian food and my nieces for the most of the interview. Um, it really wasn't anything school-based or they don't wanna know, you know, your GPA or your grades. They're not gonna ask you anything that you, you know something that they already have in front of them from your application they want to kind of get to know you as a person mm -hmm. so it's super laid back you just kind of sit there and have a conversation with them like you would if you were to go out with your friends i mean it was very very laid back and so you mentioned that you had a couple of other interviews like what made it so that you were like you know what i'm going to uab like what was that deciding factor that really made you just pursue uab as a dental school yeah, so for me, one of the main things, and I think I got to know this because I talked to a lot of people from different schools, mm -hmm. and um, one of the main things that they told me was, you know, make sure that the clinical background of the school is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, you want to go to a school where you have a plethora of patients coming in because you don't want, you know, I mean, it's great if your school is very research-based, mm -hmm. but if you're gonna be a practicing dentist, you wanna make sure that you have enough patients coming in so that you get the practice that you need. And with UAB, um, our requirements and um, kind of what they expect from you is very high. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of schools, you know, you can graduate with, you know, maybe doing 10 or 15 crowns. For us, we have to do 30 crowns. And I kind of compared, yeah, I kind of compared that with a bunch of other schools. And I'm like, you know, if they required this much of us, then that means they have to have the patient pool right. provided for us for right. us to be able to do that much. So that definitely mattered to me just because I'm like, I knew what I kind of what I wanted to do. I knew I didn't want to go into research. So that wasn't a big, um, you know, thing that I was looking out for, even though UAB does have a great research facility, but their clinical background, I mean, the clinical aspect that they provide you is very, very strong. Okay. And I, I mean, as a D3 being in clinic right now, I definitely see that. Okay. Okay. You know that, and it's huge, you know, I, I don't know yeah. the fact that you had, uh, you know, you were going through your thought process to think of that that early. That's yeah. very impressive, you know, because I wouldn't, I barely knew what a, a real crown was at that yeah, time. You know? so. exactly. I think that's why it's super important. I mean, the fact that you're doing this is great because I remember I would have to kind of go through friends of friends of friends to ask them and be like, hey, you know, why'd you choose this school? Or like, right. tell me what you did to get into dental school. You know, there wasn't when like, you know, five years ago, three, four years ago, it wasn't this easy where, you know, what you're doing, I didn't have something like that to um, look at. I kind of had to rely on people that I knew and hopefully they had friends that were in dental school right, right. Uh, to teach some information out of. Right, right. No, no, that's very true. That's real. And that's why we made it in the first place. You yeah. Know? We were going through, I'm sure we were going through the same process at the yeah. same time, just like, yo, what, <laughs> how do I figure out these <laughs> exactly. things? Exactly. So that's awesome. But anyway, anyway. Um, I want to like ask you to kind of go back in time um, and mm -hmm. think about your first year of dental school. Like, can you kind of describe what it was like throughout your entire semester? So like, you know, were you taking more classes? Were you in a uh, preclin a lot? Uh, did you have any type of clinical exposure, things like that? Yeah, so our first year, and I think it's probably normal for every first year, um, it's very, very didactic class-based. Yeah. I mean, you're in classes all day long. And I, I mean, personally, first year was not my favorite year just because of that. I was kind of tired of being in classes. I'm like, man, this is undergrad all over again. Um, just you're taking anatomy, you're taking neuro, you're taking all these classes that you 
for the most part, have taken an undergrad, but you're taking again and they amplify it by 10 because you're learning all this information in a short period of time. But um, other than that, we did have a lot of um, preclinical time where you kind of got to learn, you know, the base anatomy of teeth. Um, I know we did a lot of waxing up and stuff like that. So we did have a lot of that, um, but our true preclinical where it mattered in clinic started our second year. I think our first year was just kind of, you know, to get our feet wet, to kind of like get to know stuff. Um, and we also did have rotations that we would um, kind of go to the clinic and we were expected to assist or shadow and stuff like that. So we kind of were able to get a little bit of experience as to how, you know, the clinic works at the school and which is great um, being able to do that your first year. Right. Because you. I know a lot of schools, you know, don't do that, but um, UAB does do that. They kind of start you your first year going into clinic and getting you that experience. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so, so obviously I know you haven't been to every dental school because you're only at one, yeah. but what's something that you would say is like super unique about UAB? You know, something that you've, uh, after talking to a couple of your friends who go to dental, other dental schools mm -hmm. that you kind of recognize that like, wow, this is really special of UAB because I haven't really yeah. heard of this being anywhere else. Yeah, I think it's um, what I mentioned earlier. It's really the clinic expectations and requirements that we have. Um, I know as a student, you feel like, God, like that's so much I have to do. But I know for sure for everybody that I've talked to that have graduated, they are very glad that those are the requirements that they had because graduating you feel more comfortable going yeah. out you know, working um you know you might feel like you don't need to do a residency because you don't have the experience i know a lot of people um at uab you know get out of uab and go straight into private practice or go straight into corporate dentistry um because they feel that confident because we've had so much experience because we're you know we have so many requirements that we have to complete um so i think that's definitely a key point that sets uab apart from a lot of other dental schools mm -hmm. um and they're going to tell you that even whenever you go on an interview there it's it's such a highlight and i honestly can't stress enough how important it is i interviewed at quite a few schools and you know each school is gonna have kind of a highlight that they focus on whether they're research-based or whether you know they just you know the equipment that they used is high tech or you know whatever it is each school has kind of the highlight for them but for uab it is that you know they have a great patient pool um where you get some a lot of experience and so what how big is your class size so we um are we have traditional students and we have international mm -hmm. students so our international um students they start our second year mm -hmm. joining our class and our regular it changes about every year or so but um i think our traditional class size was about 60. okay yeah Okay, so that, that makes 70. Sense. I can't even remember at this point. Um, and then we have about um, 10 extra international students. So it kind of gets us up to 80 or so. No, that, that makes sense because, you know, at Tufts, our crown requirements, I believe they're like 10. Um, yeah. But at the same time, we have a class size of like 200. Yeah. And then our IS program, when they come in, that's an extra 30. Oh wow! So, okay. it's, it's a lot of students. Yeah, you guys definitely have twice as many people as us, so that I'm, definitely makes sense. I'm excited to see like how they change the requirements based off of this. Uh, oh yeah, time that we're not in clinic. Yeah, there. I mean, I know they've mentioned you know marking stuff as incomplete for the semester and then you know kind of rolling it over to next year. Mm -hmm. But for sure, for I mean. For next year they're gonna have to lower the requirements yeah. to help us kind of get through the requirements that we should have been able to get through this semester they're gonna have so, to well i mean it's i you know i really don't know what's gonna happen but you just gotta trust the system and i'm sure everything's gonna work itself out it always does right it yeah, always does <laughs> and, and so for the last question of the interview i want to ask you if you could go back and talk to your younger self right 
um, mm -hmm. while you're going through that application cycle, while you're stressing um, throughout the entire process? Like, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself back then? Yeah, um, one of the advice, and I don't think this is per se, like, you know, for people that are super anxious about getting into dental school right now because you're probably not thinking of this but someone that's been through it um one of the things one of the things that i would say is wherever you go on your interview if you can spend an extra day there and go around the city you know see how the town is see how everything is if it's a place you're going to spend the next four years of your life you want to make sure it's a place that you know kind of accustomed to use. Yep. I mean, there are places that, you know, if it's a small town where it's just the university, that might not be something that you're interested in if you come from a big city right. or vice versa, you know? So you want to make sure that it's not just the dental school and it's just not academics that you should be worried about. I mean, of course, that's super big, but as stressed as you're going to be in dental school, you want to make sure that you also have this other, you know, compartment put out to where you can have fun and you can do stuff and you want to make sure that you're in a town that you're able to do so you know whether if you like to hike or something and that's super important to you you don't want to go to a town where there's nothing of that sort you know in miles of radius so right. that's super important you want to kind of take the time out make sure the environment that you're going to be surrounded by for the next four years no, and that's huge because that downtime is critical. Yeah, it is. Crucial to your, your mental health um, and even to your success. Oh, yeah, it's for huge. sure. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of pre-dents don't understand that coming in. You know, mm -hmm. they think that they can just, yeah. it's only two, it's only four years of my life. Yeah. I'll just grind exactly. it away. But you just, yeah. you, can't, you can't do that. Yeah, like, you know. and I mean, I don't blame them. I never thought about that either right. whenever I was, you know, and I'm like, I got to just get into dental school. <laughs> like, I just got to, you know, get started. But um, I mean, I love Birmingham. It's a great city. It kind of has a little bit of everything. And of course, for me, I kind of was used to the city just because it's so close to where I live. It's about yeah. two hours away. So, you know, I knew what was going on. I knew the things in town. But I, you know, there are times where I thought to myself, I'm like, man, like, what if I went to this city, like, in this state? what would I do? You know, I don't know anybody or anything there. I want to make sure that it's a city I'm more comfortable with. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm not going to keep you any longer, Mona. <laughs> you have been amazing. Um, if any of our viewers have any type of questions for you, what's the best way that they can kind of like reach out and ask those questions? Yeah, so um, I, you can email me and I can give you my email and um, I don't know if you're going to, where you're going to put it. it. I'll put it in the description box. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so they can email me. Um, I also have a dental account so they can message me off of there. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody that's applying, you know, I'm more than welcome to help you with whatever questions you have. I was in your shoes a few years ago. I know how stressful it is. Um, to go through this process. So yeah, I mean, you can give them my email or um, link my account and they can message me off of there too. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much, Mona. Um, from us at Future DDS and the whole Future DDS family, you know, like we really, really do appreciate it, yeah. um, especially in these trying times. You know, there's a lot that you could be doing right now, but the fact mm -hmm. that you're here helping us yeah. is very, yeah, very glad. much appreciated. Thank I'm you. glad. Thank you, thank you. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you have any questions for us here at Future DDS, you can always shoot us a DM over on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.